moment, if you will, please. We'd like to congratulate Steve and High Energy Enterprises for their new merger with the International Tesla Society. This is going to be a very powerful union. As most of you know, Steve has been the main force behind the Nikola Tesla Museum of Science and Industry. And at this time, we would like to make a presentation to the museum. I have here a copy of an original letter which Nikola Tesla wrote to the board of directors of the Westinghouse Corporation proposing development of his telegeodynamics system. This has never been public information before, but we'd like to place it in the hands of the Tesla archives for safekeeping and where it belongs. Thank you, Steve. Now, the telegeodynamics system was taken up by Walter P. Baumgartner, who spent several years developing the various types of oscillators involved in the system. Walter has brought one of the oscillators today to donate to the museum, and I'm going to ask him now to come and make his presentation and explain to us a little bit what is telegeodynamics. Walter? I think we should first uh, make the uh, presentation of the unit and then uh, we can let you go. <laughs> uh, we would like to give this to the uh, Tesla Museum because uh, it is an apparatus Tesla has uh, uh, worked with for about 40 years. And uh, I will give you a little uh, insight on this for five minutes before we uh, go on and do the uh, water's rate experiment. So. Uh, I would like to take this poster here and give that to uh, to uh, Steve here, and uh, maybe he can put this up on the wall in your museum. And uh, we'd like to donate this unit to you. Thank so, you. Thank you. We have this poster in the library. <coughs> oh, in the library. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, most people think of Tesla as an electrical genius, uh, but Nikola Tesla also was a mechanical genius, as can be seen from his many patented devices. The device which uh, we are concerned with is what Tesla called his greatest achievement in the field of engineering. It is a mechanical oscillator, which Tesla planned to use in his proposed worldwide system of telegeodynamics or the art of producing terrestrial motions at a distance. Tesla used one of those uh, uh, oscillators to transmit mechanical vibrations through the earth and described the uh, movements as a sort of controlled earthquake. The oscillator passed rhythmic vibrations through the earth with 100% efficiency and Tesla had visions of these machines being universally adopted for a worldwide unfailing communication system and a system for 100% energy transfer to any part of the earth. The machine has one of Tesla's favorite qualities, the ability to amplify its own power. It can attain its own resonance and would actually self-destruct if allowed, like the wine glass which bursts when its body is resonated at a certain frequency. An oscillator small enough to put in one's coat pocket caused a small earthquake in Tesla's lab in New York in 1888, which drew public attention. Tesla predicted with this tiny machine and five pounds of air pressure, he could topple the Empire State Building in just about a few minutes. A larger machine of moderate dimensions weighing about 200 pounds can create pressures of many tons which are essential for the production of extremely powerful reactions. A larger machine like this uh, will 
produce a reaction of 10,000 pounds, 200 times per second, which means an accumulated rate of 2 million pounds per second, equivalent to that which might be obtained with 10,000 pounds of, uh, of dynamite. Tesla's electric generator, patent number 511916 of 1894, where an electric generator is placed on top of the mechanical oscillator like this here, shows and explains the relationship and interaction of the forces involved. If the oscillations of the reciprocating piston coincide with the oscillations of the electrical system of the generator, then both systems are in resonance. When that happens, minimum energy input is required and maximum output on the generator can be expected. Again, with proper design of conductors reciprocating in the field and considerations given to the solenoids coils collapsing magnetic field, one can, to put it into Tesla's words, magnify the output considerable. The mechanical oscillations of the pistons are only necessary in order to maintain proper period of the reciprocating system. Minimum air pressure can be maintained and no matter what the load on the generator, it cannot reflect back onto the piston. The piston with its applied air pressure is not the workhorse of the system. The same is true in the case of generating terrestrial motions at a distance. It would be ridiculous to speculate that the piston weighing maybe one or two pounds can convey the tons of pressures to the ground which are necessary to convey any wave motion at all. In general, the ideal solution is a unipolar magnetic field so determined that the electrical, mechanical, and magnetic systems are always in perfect resonance. This results in an amplification of the oscillations which, if no safety precautions were made, would go on increasing until the machine is destroyed. So the power of the piston, be it ever so great and variable, can only cause changes in the amplitude. It has no effect whatsoever on the period of the vibrations, which is determined solely by the elastic force of the spring and the mass of the parts set in motion within the oscillator. If, therefore, the amplitude and velocity is changed, it must be accompanied by a great variation of energy. And uh, now maybe just mention a few uses. And uh, using the spherical Earth as a communication system, the spherical shape of the Earth makes a perfect container to amplify and isolate sound vibrations. Therefore, one of the most promising applications of the telegeodynamic oscillator is a worldwide communication system. In our present broadcasting system, or systems, which are based on Hertz and wave concept, attenuation or weakening over a short distance from the source is a constant problem. Repeater stations must be built for periodic reinforcement and boosts of the broadcasts. Also, atmospheric and weather conditions, which change much drastically and so on, interfere with that broadcast in the telegeodynamic communication system. These problems of attenuation, reinforcement of stations and interference would not be considerations. The Earth is the booster station with the waves isolated within the Earth's shape, having its own amplification lenses and reflectors in a natural way. The system would provide an ideal ship and submarine communication at a fraction of the cost of present systems. What is perhaps more important is that it would, could provide for complete privacy on all communications, depending on modulation and so on. Now, it would be a perfect radar system. The system is non-diminishing because the mother transmitter runs continuously and establishes a standing carrier wave pattern. This pattern also provides a grid for the type of radar which will enable accurate steering of land and sea vessels and 
under all weather conditions in orthodromic paths. That's a word Tesla used. And computation of distance from any place of reference. By the impulse of the transmitter, submarine sunken ships, submerged icebergs, dangerous rock formations can be readily located. Now, the next thing would be very, very important is the mapping of the interior of the Earth. To geology is perhaps the most welcome application of teleoscillators will be the precise determination of the con constitution and physical properties of the entire planet for these vibrations penetrate thoroughly every cubic inch of the planet's mass. Now the standing wave pattern the uh, mechanical vibrations of the, of the Tesla oscillator produce continuous standing wave patterns which uh, or where readings can be done 24 hours a day. The machine is less costly to build and operate and it's not a destructive force of operation. The oscillator can integrate with the technical facilities available in geophysical work today. The geophones, recording equipment, generators and ampli amplifiers of geological survey, survey uh, uh, crew today uh, could readily integrate in the sonic system of Teslas. Uh, another major potential of the telegeodynamic oscillators is the development of a worldwide system of power transmission based on the principle of resonance. Millions of receivers accurately tuned and adjusted to resonance with the frequency of the sonic transmitter would receive enough energy to drive a rather unique type of generator utilizing a very small amount of energy due to its unusual construction. The present day geophones used in seismic work are uh, constructed to sense and vibrate to mechanical and sonic vibrations. They basically consist of a weight on a spring which begins to bob up and down when they come into resonance at a certain frequency. If the weight was a magnet and surrounded by a coil, it could look, generate electric current in the usual manner of cutting lines of force. Thus, this unique adaption design for a new generator could utilize the mechanical transmitted power of the telegeodynamic oscillator for electrical power production at any point on the Earth's surface by literally plugging into the Earth. Uh, those are some of the uses uh, this uh, oscillator uh, 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 exhibits and uh, I hope one day the system will be taken up. Uh, we have worked with that system for many years and brought it to this stage, uh, state and uh, we hope that uh, maybe on a larger scale it can be adapted and picked up by a uh, uh, by people who have the means and uh, can actually uh, initiate a system like this. So uh, I hope this will be done soon. Meanwhile, it will be in the Tesla Museum and you can read the uh, 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 letter of Tesla's uh, when he proposed the system to uh, the uh, Westinghouse uh, people in 1936. The letter was hidden for a while and we just accidentally found it uh, about 10 years ago and uh, we built the whole system practically from that letter. Thank you very much. We go on now to our uh, <coughs> water thread experiment and uh, maybe uh, uh, Reda will uh, give us an introduction to it and I will explain the unit then and what it is here for. Huh? going to go on with the Wasserfaden experiment. In a few minutes we're going to turn the lights out and we're going to demonstrate the electrical potential found in a very minute stream of water by lighting a